Alright guys, it's been a little bit of time, but kind of feel like making some type of beat. Not really sure what I'm going to do, but let's have fun. Alright, why is Ableton not showing up? Maybe. Great. Restart it. Ah. <sighs> Pretty promising, got the little start screen. There we go. Alright. So for some odd reason with the streaming software, you can't really see extra windows, so I'll try and keep everything native. But we'll see. Alright, so let's first start. Oh, that's by opening the song that I have. And that's gonna drive me nuts too, but Hopefully I can readjust. Alright, it didn't yet, so let's readjust. Okay, cool. Alright, so I'm gonna first increase my BPM to like a we'll do 140 for now. Uh 140 is really popular for like drum and bass. 128 is real popular for uh dance music in general. I literally have no direction with what I'm doing yet um, and it's unfortunate that you can't see these extra windows that pop up and stuff like that Let's see if I can maybe finagle this enough um, no. Well, anyways, let's just do A minor for now. It's a nice little program, the Captain Chords and the Captain Plugin Suite, because even though, you know, I have knowledge of music theory and everything like that, it, it's kind of cool to just draw everything out for you, you know? Anyways, so A minor, it's the one chord. Let's see how it sounds. Let's add another one. Dun, dun. So I have A, C, E, because we're in A minor. Um, so let's see, let's bring this to a three chord, a C major. Okay. And then... gonna take that last chord that's on uh, the fourth measure and let's um, uh, I like that right so I'll do my best to not work in the Captain Chords plugin so you guys can see what I'm doing. So let me just draw that out of there. All right. So I got one, one, three, five, seven. Or A minor, A minor, C major, E minor, G major. And like I said, the Captain Chords plugin pretty much draws everything out. I followed so many flipping directions on how to get everything to show up. Uh, but it just doesn't seem to want to work for me as far as like those other windows and screens and stuff go All right, so I'm gonna rename this. It's currently track one So I'm just gonna call it section a because I'm not sure if that's gonna be my hook 
my verse you know what right but anyways so i'm going to disable captain chords there have it not play just to save my cpu because even though i got a quad core It gets bogged down, it seems, sometimes. Uh, so, let's get a little instrument here. I'm gonna go to the Arturia B collection. Got a nice little piano there, you know. So, let's uh, Let's bust out the uh, piano that they have for Arturia. I'm not like I said. I'm not going to make too many changes to it. I just prefer this piano sound over the piano sounds that come native with uh, Ableton. So I'm just going to do a pop clean studio. I think is the one I like a lot. Yeah. A little soft right now, but we can adjust that, right? Alright, so my gain's at negative 11.4. Let's take that up. So I'm going to copy this again because I want to change these rhythms bad. All right. So I'm just going to copy that again, you know, control click. This is going to drive me nuts, but we'll see. Okay. So I'm going to do quarter notes, triple it, maybe, oh, there we go. Whatever. Okay. Turn triple the grid off. Yeah. And let's go to sixteenth so I don't Come back to this every second. So it's the same chords that we had with the beginning, right? I'm just making a little differentiation in it just to make it sound interesting, more appealing to the user, you know? All right. Now, I know that was real quick seems kind of basic and i'm probably going to use this progression more than you guys would like to know and i'll still try and make it interesting right so there's there's different ways that you can do this right let me just to show you guys an example so right now i have this c chord right or sorry a chord a c e so let's take the bottom line move it up Right, and you could literally use that, you know, one for this section, one for the other section, you know, different random stuff. So, okay, anyways, getting a little ahead of myself, 
let's uh do something else here so feeling a base here um i got a lot of cool bases for pigments i just got it kind of want to mess around with it but again since i'm doing the live stream with you guys here i'll probably take it easy on really getting into the deep deep dive of pigments all right so i'm just gonna look up base types and randomize it see what i got here okay so this is a minor for those at home uh that means if you look at a keyboard be all the white notes so let's see what the sounds <laughs> We can do something like that just for starters and then we'll get more into it as we go on right and maybe we'll do that for one section do a totally different base for another section different stuff like that right guys so anyways uh if i go here we got a that probably goes up to the c i could see g all right so let's do a two let's go down to that c i think it would sound cooler to go down to that rather than go up to the C. Like, does it sound cool, you know? And so, just because I'm feeling lazy, don't feel like reading chords, so E and G. Captain plug. All right, E. G, which is seven, okay. So I'll probably do this for like the hook because it has that nice sound for it, you know, and maybe do something like a little more simple for the verses, but we'll see. <laughs> Let's turn it down an octave. All right, so we'll keep that for a later section. I want to get something a little more plucky. Oh, just renaming this real quick. Let me get that screen back for you guys. All right. Um. I guess we can do pigment just for fun. Yo, 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 what up, Joe John? I'm gonna bust out pigments again. See if I can get a little more plucky base for the verses. All right, so I'm going to go base hard style. Let's see if that's getting us what we want. Yeah, let's try something like that. Okay. I name this BA2. So I have a second base now. Bring the screen back. All right, so for 816. So hit this button up here and then it actually plays with these notes. So we'll duplicate that. I think that's what we want. Hmm. Maybe let's try that. Hmm. All right. So I may have to do that triplet here that we did in the keyboard just to make it sound good. Yeah, let's try that. I think that's what I need to do. Sounds off. Whatever, let's just see if this works.
like that. Ah, uh, we'll see. We can always change that later. But it's just somewhere to start, build off of, you know. A lot of this is just like when you, when I at least make music, it's very organic, change stuff all the time, you know, especially like inversions in the chords. What I mean by inversions in the chords, guys, um, like how this one right now is A, C, E. I take that A and put up an octave, it kind of changes, you know, uh, what the low note of that is. So now, you know, it sounds a little different. Not too much. Let's turn that bass down a little bit. Yes, we'll let you do it. All right, sounds kind of cool. Got a nice kick drum going here. Those you guys that have watched in the past definitely rock the kick famous with a little drum bus. All right. So we got that loaded. Let's go to audio effects. Throw the drum bus on it. Now, you'll notice when the drum bus loads up, it's got this G here, right? And it's even a plus, man. So what I'm going to do is increase the frequency here to A. Sorry. All right, increase that to A. Now you see a zero plus. So if I hit this, Puts it in tune, right? So that's kind of cool stuff. All right. This is just for starters. Just going to do on one and three. I'm going to turn the drive down on this. Turn the compressor on. Do this to medium. See how that just changes it immediately? God, I love drum bus. So let's take the boom up to like 50%. Take this down to like eight. I'm gonna take the decay down to 90. So it's still a little splatty, so let's make it hard. Makes it a little, you know, give it a little bit more there. Take the, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is increase the boom, take down the decay. So it makes it a little harder, but you still have the uh, the deepness there, right? You know, it's something real simple, right, guys? We just started this song. Continues to build as you go, right? So I'm going to add a clap in here just to keep it real simple, you know, for now. You might get into some hi-hats, might get into hi-hats later. We'll see what happens, you know. Oh, not hi hat. I want that trap slap. In my opinion, the best clap ever, right? But I think I'm gonna do clap on the hook. So let's keep that there. And let's actually get a snare now that I think about it. Oop. Probably gonna do multiple snares here, right? Cause that sounds really good on the hard note. You know, but I think we're gonna want like another. Just for fun, how would this sound? See so yeah, like how it just changes the whole dynamic from like, you know, it feels faster. You kinda wanna like manipulate the kick a little bit, right? So let's just for fun. I'm gonna copy this, keep it down here. Maybe the first time going through, we'll do it like this, and then the next time going through. Oh, I do that way too often. I think I'm going to do the clap on three, actually, for the hook. I think I just got some crazy ideas. Okay. So let's make this at eight. So I'm going to duplicate the loop. 
I put another kick there. Maybe put another one there just for fun, you know. I'm going to duplicate this again because I think I want to put another one there too. Okay, I'm at second time only, right? That's why it's on uh, the third measure, not the first measure. So by adding that one in there, it almost like continues this kick like a little bit. Da, 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 da. You know, so it continues this rhythm here a couple times. Sounds cool. Three times, in fact. But anyways, um, so I'm going to take this, duplicate it down here because everyone's favorite thing to do is after eight measures or 32 beats, put a little bit of a break in there. So I'm keeping the original one just in case the break doesn't sound that good, right? So I'm going to do the same thing here, make it a 32. All right, and that kind of sounded like it needed this here. It's so like a little breakdown. The da, 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 right? Another little phrase there. So we're just going to take out that last one. I took out two, but I really meant to take out one. All right. So we got our little verse here forming. Let's get some, some trap hi-hats going on. I love trap hi-hats, but like a semi-trap, not like too crazy, but uh, just fun. So I usually do like a harsher one. A lighter one, and these are both closed, and then a little open one. I mean, feel free to mess around with stuff, of course, guys. I'm going to duplicate this, make it an 8, have that harsh one just be on this one. Maybe on this 4 as well, so. Yeah, actually, I'm going to take it off of 4. So let's, uh, right, let's duplicate this one for fun. Put an open hi hat on the second measure. Now, one of my favorite things to do, guys, is highlight multiple here. So now I have all my drums in front of me, and you can just like select the different colors and shit here. It's awesome. All right, so I got this close tap. It's gonna be like my Fun one, right? Did not mean to adjust the size. I'm just going to control Z that to get that away. Let's try this. Maybe make that a duplicate as well, right? So it's almost like on the off beat that we're doing these just for fun. Let's see how it sounds, right? All right, 
that's uh, kind of like that. You know, it's simple. We can always make it better, right? So since I like that, I'm just going to control copy it down here to a new scene. Not a specific reason other than I kind of like where it's at right now and don't want to mess with it. I'm going to take that kick that I had for this original one and actually move it down to that scene as well. Um, all right, so let's check this out. Okay. So I'm going to take this one, the uh, the tap hi-hat, if you will. I'm going to duplicate it. So this little section here that goes up. Let's see if we can do something different the second time. So minor change, all I changed was that one, right? These are still the same. So let's take that down, copy it. I guess, whatever. I can always skip that. Okay, so I'm gonna take this one, make it a 32. And this one, I don't have to make a 32. And the reason is, is because it's on the one. If it was on the two, if I expanded it out to 32 beats, and that would be on the uh, first beat of the eighth measure. So I'm not even gonna mess with that. This one I'm gonna keep though, like, so it's gonna be on the one of the eighth measure, but I think it'll sound okay. It's on the one, if it was on the two, three, or four, I'd probably take it away. Maybe even though, because the clap here is on two of the eighth measure, so 8.2. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Why did I take that away from him? Dude, what did I do? Maybe I didn't. Okay, but I did. Let's check out this one. Uh, that's gonna be the verse, I think, right? I'm gonna pull that down a little bit and take what I have here, the hook. I think these are the same right now. Yeah, I'm gonna take this. All right. Shit. So this bass here, man, that, that's real raunchy. I'm gonna see if I can do some automation with it and stuff, but I'm not gonna have it on the first hook, most likely, just so we have something to build into, you know? All right, let's make this eight beats. Get a real strong one. so far 
All right, and I'm still keeping the that base in there, that pigments that I said I was going to have on the first time to have it in here, so it sounds more organic when it comes back in. Because I'm trying to, you know, build this going right now. Look at the webcam. Okay, there it goes. Looks like it was frozen or something. Sorry about that. Okay, anyways, um, here we go. Throw another one in there. It kind of gives it that little bounce there, you know. Make this a 16. I think on the second time I'm going to put one there. Yeah. Just so I have it, everything. Copy this down here. So I'm going to duplicate this, take out those last few notes. That's a 32, so that'll be enough for the hook. Take my four to a 32, take out the last one. All right, let's see how this sounds. This one's gonna be interesting. So for some odd reason, dance music, just like a hi-hat on the offbeat sounds flipping sweet. So let's see if it works with this one so far. Maybe, maybe not. We'll keep it in there for now, but I'm going to take this though and expand it to the 32. We can take out those last few. Okay. That makes you want to bounce with it a little bit. But okay, so what else can we do here? Here it goes into the other section. Alright. Alright, so this bass feels a little lower than this bass, right? So since this one's a little lower on the, the feel of it, I'm going to keep the piano lower, right? Sounds like a good, you know, good balance. Now the bass on this one feels a little higher. I'm just curious. That sounds cooler. I'm gonna take as I was talking about the, with those different versions. Let's try one just for fun. Maybe two. Nah. All right. Now since this is coming second, uh, what I mean by that is that we have this right the the hook first. so I'm gonna mess with the listener a little bit by putting some of these down an octave so it's kind of like different what you're used to different what you're used to so let's hear how this sounds
shit for this base. So let's pull it up real quick. Sorry, you guys can't see anything. At my, uh... All right. So uh, if you guys are familiar with serum, it's pigments is kind of like it, but it has a few more things. So I'm not going to try and get here too much, but safety first guys. So I'm going to duplicate this. All right. Maybe not. Oh, too many keys. All right, so I duplicated my pigments. So just in case I uh, totally f this up, I have a backup. So I'm gonna, you know, turn pigments off itself, and then turn the channel off just to save those CPU resources. All right, so let's go back to our active pigments. So right now, I'll try and describe what's going on since you guys can't see it. Um, I got a wavetable pulled up in pigments. Uh, Apocalypse Snow is the preset. Um, shit, what, I don't even know what it's under. Oh, it's a factory. Okay, cool, it's a factory one. I just want to make sure because I uh, got a few packs too. Okay, so it's got a function three going on the wave table one position. Looks like it's a side chain or something goofy. Ooh, why did I turn that off? Well, let's hear how it sounded. Look at that, I already messed it up. I think that's actually what I was going for anyways. I just got to uh, somehow let it, maybe I'll work on the envelope, okay. Yeah, so I gotta work on the decay on this. Um. So on this one, I go up to G on the force. Let's hear how that would sound on this. All right, let's add this one too. I'm gonna put that back there just so there's some differentiation. There's a little bit more sound design I want to see if I can do here. Don't want to do too much. Um, so, like, when an organ plays, you know how there's, like, that little bit extra that happens right away? Uh, they call that a chiff. And this instrument right now has a little bit of a chiff. Like, when you, when you play it... So I wonder, I think that's just the comb filter that they have on it. So rather than fix it in pigments, uh, I'll just try and fix it with an EQ8 or something. Uh, sound design and EQing and stuff like that is not my uh, forte yet, but just trying to get into it, have a good time type shit, you know, so I'm just going to...
quite satisfied with that. Let's see what's going on. So it does have two comb filters on it, which I don't feel like even trying to mess with those because. I know it's a comb filter. So that's what your comb filter and automation does, kids. Turn on its own. I crack myself up sometimes, guys, but I'm going to change this preset. I don't know what I'm going to change it to, but let's see what else we got here. I guess it's kind of the difficulty with like making a song without any specific genre or anything in mind because then it's like, well, what type of bass do I want? This might take a little bit, guys. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. All right. Let's see what Razor Bass has. Razor Bass is a uh, expansion pack for Piglins that has some pretty cool items. Shit. some automation here automations everyone's friend right yep all right so just for fun what you can do is you can like highlight this entire area and then come on the bottom right? maybe even slow it down just check out sounds right Again, summer. This back. So. I'm 
Yeah, that's the fun part about like doing this type of stuff, man. <sighs> Sometimes gotta listen to the same phrase a lot. You know, I mean, go figure, right, guys? But. <laughs> Sold on it. Dang it. Uh. I'm delete this automation so far. Maybe take this out. A little break there. Take that out. to be a little bit more so i'm gonna uh, do a 16th on these bars i'm gonna go to 32 and just see if that little gap in there is what we need it's like oop damn it It's something. I'll work with that for now. Uh, I'm going to take this one, keep it on the end just in case something tickles my fantasy and want to bring that back in. Okay. <laughs> Alright, something I haven't done yet is actually. Um, Alright. Don't freeze up on me now, Ableton. You're freezing up on me. Mm-hmm. So that moment when you haven't saved in a while and you hope to God that you're Ableton, uh let's check that out. Hmm. All right, so would I like to recover my work? Absolutely, wouldn't you? Is able to not show There it is. All right, report a crash. Probably should, but let's see how bad it is. <laughs> All right, so that one base didn't save. 
<clears throat> that's okay. Excuse me. Um, you know, I probably should report more stuff, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> We can go with that just for now. Whatever, screw it. Okay. All right. So, pretty much got a kick, snare, or a clap, hi hats, piano for like the chords, a little bass action. Let's move these basses over here. So, one thing we kind of need now is a lead, right? Our voice or something like that. I don't feel like going on like a website and looking for a vocal sample at the moment. So let's uh, get out our friend with Captain Chords. Is plugin sorry. So they got this melody one that's pretty dope too, guys. So now what this is going to do, it's interesting. Oh, it's because my other one's not on. Let me turn this Captain Chords back on. Turn it back on, okay. Alright, so you guys can't really see much here, so I'm not going to get into it too much. But it, it's kind of cool, like, you can, uh, the shape, the rhythm, first note lanes, or whatever, uh, so just, you know, it's just something crazy, random, or whatever, but kind of works. So, I'm going to take off, it, it's got what I call lanes in it, so, essentially, I'm just going to take the second and the seventh and reduce those lanes. Okay, so now I have my root third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Update my lanes. We go with rhythm, add a couple notes. my length a little bit that, that kind of did some weird stuff let's take it back down to first all right Yeah, I wish you guys could see this um, as it's going on, but more or less, I just use this to like come up with ideas and then manipulate, like I manipulate the other one, like the rhythms and stuff like that. So I'm just not finding anything I like quite yet, though. <laughs> I'm not, like I said, I'm not really finding anything I love yet. So let's, um, let's just take this. I'm gonna rename this to section 
A again, but I should probably let me rename this to oh what did I do This drives me nuts. Okay, so I'm renaming this L D space section A. I'm going to rename the other one CRD section A for chord. This is kind of the chords, right? Okay, so here we go. So track one, I usually save for like an 808. You know, with this one, I wasn't sure where I was going to go. And I don't think we're going to need that like for an 808. So I'm just going to move that over to where track 11 is at the moment. See if we can get a lead going on. If I'm changing that, the answer is yes. Give me a little bit of time, guys. All right, so I'm gonna go back to Captain Chords, disable the plugin, disable the audio output again, just to save the CPU. Man, let's have that equal the same color. All right, now what can we do here? Just so you guys can actually see me mess around with something. I'm gonna do uh, one of the Ableton stock ones. You can actually see it on the screen and stuff like that. I'm just kind of curious what we got here. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Promising we're gonna stick with this, but let's just hear how it sounds. Alright, All right, so it's a little low, let's bring it up an octave. Uh, copy okay so I already did copy what we had originally good all right so you know the captain it's cool and shit but it does stuff that I wouldn't do especially on like more of a friendly song like this where you're trying to get people to listen and not like be intrigued by the different rhythms and stuff like that what I mean by that is this right so you got your measures here, right? And then you got your four beats that are in the measure. Now, why this is doing it on, you know, so if you count music, uh, like classically, it's like one and two and three and four, right? Or one E and uh, two E and uh, right? So this F comes on the uh, so it sounds kind of weird, right? So if we move that up a half. So it's on the and, it might sound a lot better. So let's grab this at the same time. The reason I'm grabbing this is so I can look at what my chords are, right? And just help myself out. Okay, so ACE, right? 
so C is going to be the third. So it's not going to sound as strong. Have it, having an F here. Now nah, let's take that down to E because that'll be the fifth. The F there would have been, yeah, the F would have been a minor six. That's why I kind of made some dissonance there. <laughs> It's gonna be. Let's follow that rhythm there. And the keyboard, you can see that it comes on the end of the second beat in the third measure. So let's take this. Okay. Oh, I said that, why'd they do that? I kind of like it actually in this instance now because it's, it's leading up to this next note. sound kind of off probably needs to go down that half step which sounds a little off too uh, but it's okay because it's a B natural yeah Nice little melody, nice little melody, nothing too crazy, but it, you know, it's a little happiness there, you know. So just for fun, let's see how it sounds on this. Oh, did not mean to do that. Let's see how it sounds in this section too. <laughs> So the reason I'm doing it like that is so it's almost like a little interlude after the hook. So let's put that down there. Okay. Okay. Cool.
All right. So let me talk about what I'm thinking right now, guys. So on the second scene here, we have the hook, right? But this is like the built up hook. We need to simplify it down a little bit. Okay, so I got claps coming on the three. So let's have some fun here. Just for copy and paste sake, I'm gonna keep it there, okay. Put that there just so there's a little bit of gap in between everything. Move this down so we can gain more space up here. Alright. So this scene, I guess right now it's scene six, is a duplicate of scene two, okay? But the difference is is that with scene two, I'm totally taking out that base. Totally taking out the open hi hat. Now, I'm going to take this open clap, duplicate it up there for the intro. Let's take the piano, do that same thing. Now, with the claps, these are, it's 32 beats, right? 32 is plenty for an intro. So I'm going to take out the first three measures, just so we have a little bit of that piano coming in without anything else, right? So I'm going to duplicate this, but I'm sorry. Yeah, duplicate it and then duplicate the loop. Take everything out there. Take this last B out as well. Let's see how this sounds, guys. So that sounds kind of cool with that fourth beat missing, right? Let's look at this piano here. Take that out. Let's hear how this sounds out. So now I'm going to stop this here. All right, cool. So I'm going to go to these three tracks here, which is my kick, my clap, and my piano. I'm going to select those three and do Control E, which removes the stop button. So what this, what this will do is while I'm playing scene two, I'm bringing scene three in after it completes 32 beats of scene two and then we have like a little interlude section and then we can go into the verse so it just creates a little bit of change there sorry my dog was sneezing or something all right so take this down a little bit oh. all right i don't know why but i Always like having a lot of space here at the bottom just for uh, configuration doing doing some stuff a little differently okay so this is my verse section I'm gonna copy this and bring this down here yeah cool stuff right now I'm starting off with a kick and a clap right just real simple no big deal okay we have our interlude come in with the kick and the clap as well so I'm going to take this snare because it's similar to the clap. I'm not going to have it come in right away. Okay. Now we also have our kick here right away. So I'm going to have it come in later even than the clap. So what I have when the burst starts, I have all my hi-hats, I have the bass and I have that piano, which is a similar, but a little different. So that piano, it's probably just going to write the whole song at this point, guys, right? Why not? All right, so let's uh, remove the stop from the bass and the piano. We'll do the same for the hi-hats. Now, where it gets fun, I'm not going to do anything with the clap here. I'm going to take the kick and do it there. So what this is essentially going to do is when I start scene four, it's gonna have the hi-hats, the bass, and the piano, okay? 
then 16 beats are four measures in. I'm going to bring in uh, approximately right. I'll bring in the snare, another 16 beats. Take out the snare, bring in the kick, another 16 beats. There's our snare and our kick because I removed the stop button from the kick. When it first comes in, it won't do, it won't play, right? Still not playing. Halfway through the verse, it comes in and plays through the end of the verse. Okay, cool. So that's real quick, real dirty, real easy. So I'm just basically going to do the opposite for the second verse, right? Just make it quick, simple, easy. That means the bass doesn't come in till the second half of the verse. Piano's there, of course. We'll have our kick and our clap right in the whole time. Now, you guys probably see me doing a lot of fun things like how I'm highlighting multiples of these. All you got to do is uh, hit shift and click like so I'm able to do those four. Now to have some real fun, you can also do multiples of these at the same time. So now if I hit control, look at that, more boxes, right? Now, oh, you can even deselect them. So I just selected all those groups. Control E them away. <sighs> Shit. Let me re remove that. So the reason I'm removing that is because I forgot about the interlude. Yeah, forget about the interlude. Excuse me. All right, so let's move that down again. Uh, move that. Uh, we got that coming in. Oh, not that. Okay. And we'll bring in this hook again. All right. Move this down one or two. All right. Okay. We'll make a little outro section, so we'll want the piano and that lead. And uh, goofy as this is, let's maybe do the hi hat the whole time. Uh, bring the kick in about halfway. Okay, I'm just spitballing here, having a good time. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments or suggestions, feel free to make them. So essentially, I've just uh, made a quick sketch of this and entire song. I'm going to take a quick cigarette break as it's been a little over an hour. I'll be right back. Um, we'll track out this song, maybe add a few more effects, maybe add a few more other things while we're at it. But give me like 10 minutes or so. I'll be right back.
All right. Hey, sorry about that, guys. Um, let's have some fun, though. All right. So we got everything lined up right now for the song. Pretty much, right? We have our intro. Scene one. Scene two. First hook. A little interlude section. Verse, verse, verse. Hook two. Interlude. Verse two. Hook three. Interlude. Outro. All right. So I have a push too. I can do all that cool shit there, but you guys really can't see it much. So I'll try and do as much on the screen as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's do our control S to save the sheet. We're gonna start with that. Now I'm gonna hit the record button. You'll notice that if I go into my other mode here, everything's empty, right? That's okay. I like. All right, let's make them all about the same size. All right. So we can minimize these because they aren't in use yet. We're also going to unarm this track. The reason I'm unarming it is because when we do the recording here, it would just have a blank track that's playing the whole time. So it would just be kind of annoying, right? All right, so let's go back to our scenes. All right. We got that. Stop it. I'm going to hit the record and we're going to go have some fun. So if I hit the tab button, you'll see that it's starting to fill in this information. But as far as the basic structure and everything goes, that's it, right? And that's a pretty long song at this point, you know, for what people are used to now at, you know, a little over 240, right, guys? But let's see what we can do to make this a little bit interesting, right? Um, some things, you know, aspects that made this longer, of course. Um, we had that little interlude section. Not every song will have that, right? So that's almost like doubling the hook every flipping time. I kind of like it so far, so we'll keep it in there. Um, all right. 
So let's have some fun, right? So we see this is the halfway mark. Or the quarter way mark, sorry, of the verse. What I'm gonna do is actually take that out of the last measure there. So it's like, ah, eh, there's nothing on one, but oh, you're gonna do that to me. So I'm gonna do like that. Okay. So then on the fourth measure, we have that come in. So let's listen to that. See, sounds kind of cool, right? So we'll do that again over here. Or, better yet, why don't we just copy paste this from over there, right, guys? Okay, cool. That's actually how it should be looking at that second verse. Um, okay, that's good. That's good. So with this, I need to expand it out, okay. Forgot I did that. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. We'll just copy paste that over. So what that does is like, before this comes in, gives it a little bit of flair, you know? A little bit of flair there, okay. My verses should be decent. We got that going on. There's those little breaks there just for like a good punchline if the rapper's on it or something, okay. So, stick that note out. Yeah, we'll, we'll add that little gap in there that we did in the intro. That makes sense, okay. I think I'm gonna put that in here, okay. I, I thought that was missing, okay. Just a little gap, so just to make it easy on me, I'm gonna delete that. I guess that too. Okay. Essentially, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this, copy this, and then I'll copy it one more time. And I'll just delete the last one. Oh. That sounds cool. Okay, so I'm gonna expand this a little bit just because I forget how long this is. And just to hold that note out, okay? And then I'm gonna put it back just to see those lines a little easier there. All right. All right. Nice little ending there. So everything else is looking. All right, so this one we need to remove that last note there, okay. But we're gonna have a little bit more fun here in the verses, so we'll probably add some risers too. Why not? Uh, some hip hop artists I work with for some odd reason don't like them. I'm like, come on, guys, just a transition, it's nothing too crazy. All right, so let's hear how this bass sounds. <laughs> So that kind of 
carried it through that, right? So let's see. gap there okay cool I only do that when that's there though that note to cover it It's hard to do the last verse anyways, okay. Cool. I got this last one here in the piano, just see how it sounds. Okay. Oh, big deal, man. All right, we'll take that out here, too. Okay. And since I put a little gap there, we'll do that on the second verse as well. I just do the one note. Yeah, so it's equivalent to the bass. Let's take out the bass note. Yeah, that sounds on this first time. Uh, let's keep it there. I'm gonna keep that first one a little different since there's not that bass to fill that one lucky note there. All right, so I have these two awesome audio tracks and no risers yet. That's a problem. Let's get some risers in there. So risers, like I said, they're just transitions, right guys? Nothing too crazy. Uh, I love these cashmere ones that I have though, uh, especially the reverse vocal, right? Oh, that sounds like such a build up to a hook. It's not even funny. So let's put that right here. See how it looks. We'll expand this a little bit. So audio file manipulation, not something I've shown you yet this time around. Um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and change this to complex pro. I you can't see it because this fucking program is stupid. Okay. So this little area here, uh, it's like, I don't want to click it because it's going to show. Anyway, so I'm going to take my performance down. All right, so that carried into it really well, but I actually want to put a little gap there. So let's hear how this sounds. Okay, it's sounding better. But again, it, it sounded like this note was a little bit after. That's probably perfect, okay. So let's see how loud that was so we can adjust it out. It was a negative four and a half. So let's try at least negative three. All right, all right, so that sounds kind of cool. But then this one too. So, hmm. okay, 
Anyways, there's obviously a lot of reverb on that piano. It's the lead. Stupid. I like that or not. Oh, whatever. We can always adjust stuff right now. So I need to adjust this back. So it's not terrible. Sorry, guys. Um, by the way, I'm hitting control and using the center scroll on the mouse to do that zoom in, zoom out stuff. Sorry if it's making you guys dizzy or whatever. My apologies in advance. Okay. I just try to make these equal. So it looks like that's just beat four, right? So let's see if we can do something like that over here. Good enough, right? Okay, cool, guys. Let's take this, copy it over here. Remember when you cop, uh, control, click, drag, whatever. Uh, remember when you control, click, drag to, uh, if you have a little bit of white space at the end of it, you know, or, you know, or make sure you, you know, mind that gap, if you will. So again, and sorry this is gonna mess with the screen because it always does. Complex Pro. Um Complex Pro is essentially just the formulation that it uses, right? So I'll just name these all off um real quick. So there's beats. So like so, and this is all warp technology. Weep uh beats, tones, texture, read pitch, complex, complex pro. Like I said, complex pro one I use ninety percent of the time. Something like that. And again, I'm just trying to create this quick little beat here. Nothing too crazy yet, guys. Okay. Almost sounds like a burst when that comes in. <sighs> Whatever. Okay. Um it is what it is, right? So everyone's favorite part. The tag. With the With the sounds good there, okay. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, there it is. That's cool. Like, so right after it says drip, then that lead comes in. Mm. Perfect, okay. Um, let's see how loud that is. A little loud, put it down at least four. 
But it's only in the intro, so it should be there. It begins with the drip. Not bad. Now, I think the snare sounds like complete crap. I'll be honest. I've just been keeping it here for a minute. Let's see if we can do anything with it. You know, it's kind of boring. Oh, sounds better on its own than it does in the mix, but in the mix, it's losing it. So let's see if I can brighten that up a little bit. Um, one of my favorite plugins that's free I don't think they distribute it anymore. I'm kind of worried about, you know, future uh, availability, but it's called Camel Crusher. I was watching a uh, YouTube video once on like Martin Garrix tearing shit up and he used this on leads and stuff. So I'm not going to uh, use it on lead. It's gonna be a little bit of a distortion or bit crusher, if you will, for that snare, just to see how it sounds. So there's a lot of reverb on that natural one. That kind of sounds like shit. Damn it. All right. Let's uh, hold back. Okay. I'm just replacing the snare because it sounds like my snare sounds like shit for all you audio engineers out there. Go figure. All right. Go back to drums. Do what boy Wanda has here. Sounds cool. So let's go with that one. That's a little snap here. Okay. Still got a little reverb on it, but. a little better i'm happy with that okay. let's take this down like another two decibel probably all right now i really haven't mixed much of this obviously so that's like negative eight that's the let's take that down one take this down two negative one um that's probably a little loud but it's piano I might keep that a little loud just because it is piano. It's a little more delicate of an instrument, so it needs a little bit more oomph to get through everything, you know? All right, this bass obviously has like compressor and some other effects on it, so it is cutting through the mix like no other. So let's turn it down a little bit. So by doing that, now I can now turn down the piano a little bit, potentially. I'll probably have to turn down the bass in the other section too. All right, the snare is a little loud now, so let's take it down to like two and a half. Now, I know this bass isn't too low, but it's just a good, good habit to have to sidechain, my friends. Now, sidechaining isn't something I did in the intro, and just a, a quick description of it. Essentially, what a sidechain does is that it, it will, in this instance, what I'm using it for is to have both of these bases. Uh, get a little softer for the kick to create a pocket or a hole for that kick to go into so that once you have that pocket or that hole uh, that kick punches through a little better right so I'm gonna go to my audio effects and I'm gonna get on my compressor I'm just gonna so what section are we on here right so we're on this one so let's just get our compressor out and I'm just gonna do this real basic side chain of audio from Kick Famous. Of course, you guys lost sight because this site's 
This is goofy, okay. Let's reduce that, reduce that, reduce that, okay. Okay, so where we are, we were at here, okay. So I got my side chaining coming in post effect. God bless it. Coming in post effects, I'm not gonna click it again. Uh, the reason I wanted to go in post effects rather than pre effects is because remember on the post effects, uh, we have the drum bus, right? So it'd be like an effect, up. I assume, right? I don't know. Anyways, I guess technically to no, that'd be a return track. Say, so yeah, I think that's <clears throat> talking about stuff like that. Okay, so going back down here, so we have our side chain up. We have a threshold here, right? So if I play it right now, starting here where the kick comes in. Right. So let's put this threshold in here. Negative like 20, just so you can really hear. Do an auto release. Hear how that kick just comes through like magic now. Maybe a little bit too good, right? So let's increase the threshold, 5 dB. Now, with me doing that threshold and all this stuff, now this seems a little quiet. So let's put up 2 dB. Sounds good. Okay, so let's come over here. We need to do a sidechain on this one. Now I'm gonna do different values for them since they're different bases and, oh, sorry, I gotta do the kick famous there. Uh, different values because they're different bases and they might have a different threshold, right? So we had a negative 15 for this one, but I think this one's probably gonna need a heavier one. So we'll go back to negative 20, do auto release. You know what? That kind of took away too much flavor, I think. get into some real fun i could probably end it here putting a limiter on the master or something like that increasing it a few db because you'll notice that oh that's not a good example uh, so i could probably increase it at least a decibel and a half maybe two decibels putting a limiter on it and then the whole sound Comes a little louder. It's a not a mix or a master. Um, I'm kind of mixing as I'm going. Not the best at it, but hey, everyone gets better as they go along, right? Okay. Um, so, cool thing is though. I mean, like seriously, look at this track. It's pretty basic. Not too crazy, but for two hours, eh, not bad. Shit, I got 10 tracks total um, so far. Six of them are drum. Well, I guess plus three more audio tracks, but I'm not really counting those. Guess you can. But anyways, it's a simple song, but it gets the job done, right, guys? Okay, so panning and all this fun stuff uh, is kind of cool, especially with one of these tools. Again, I wish you guys could see the screen and what this is about to do, but Shaper Box by Cable Guys. 
is just amazing. Amazing. But let's check out some stuff here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this track, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to name, ah, shoot, sorry guys, I'm just putting a V, I'm sorry, an H at the front of the top one, and a V at the bottom of the second one. Because it's the same piano, right? Oh. Quick second, sorry. Alright. There you guys are back. Alright, cool. So now what I'm gonna do with this is I have one for the hook, one for the verse, okay? So the one that's for the hook, I'll just keep on the intro. Okay? So I'm gonna delete the verse one. And I'll just do the opposite for this, okay? And if all else fails and this turns out to be a complete catastrophe, um, I can just always bring these up and down, right, guys? Okay. Let's delete those. Okay. So now, got two different sounds here. I mean, similar sound, of course, because they're identical right now, right? So what I'm gonna do with ShaperBox is have it pan stuff, okay? Uh, I'll try and explain everything in time as I can't really uh, show you this, but anyways, so I'm gonna do a pan on this and the ShaperBox is, I could, it, it's totally cool. I initially got it just for the time warp because it reminded me of Fruity Loops, uh, Gross Beat, I know I'm using Ableton now, but I, I started on Free Loops years ago. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go back to this pan. I'm going to do a hard left and a hard right to start off with, just so you guys can hear it. Uh, it's out of one bar. So I think this will be cool. Alright, so that's a really hard pan. I don't want to do it that much. People might flip out, right? Let's take it a little easier. So it's still coming out both sides the entire time. It's just not like, it's kind of like a little slow, right? So the pan, when everything else comes in, doesn't seem as noticeable, but it's still kind of there, right? So if I play it even on here. Kind of cool. You probably have to put on headphones to really notice or, you know, but that's a whole nother story. Okay. So now this section here. Sounds good, but let's make it sound cooler, right? Um, another plugin I wish I could show you guys. This one's kind of one that I stumbled upon on accident. It just happened to be on Splice Rent Own. I'm going to go to my verse and I'm going to go ahead and add movement. Now, Movement was a VST I got years ago uh, when I first transitioned to Ableton. And the reason I got it is because it, again, it reminded me of Gross Beat. I just love Gross Beat. It's fun to have fun with it. You know, essentially like the time manipulation stuff. Um, if you guys got a chance to check out uh, the remix I just dropped like a couple days ago, uh, where Sun Goes Down. I used shaper box the time warp in it for the bridge section and it was the shit um, probably one of my proudest moments of my own music creation might do a video later to show you guys that that one's a fun just a walk through of the fun little stuff I did with that track to make it sound how it does but anyways back to this track so we got movement which is a BST makes some cool sounding stuff so if you remember the piano that's the pan with So now this is gonna take a couple seconds. Oh, you guys lost the screen again. Alright, it's gonna take a, a few tries, so just take this with a grain of salt how it sounds because uh this is essentially 
movement has four different uh, rhythms. They can be LFOs, they can be everything, right? So and then the rhythms manipulate filters, delays, compressors, all sorts of fun shit, distortion, equalizers, reverb. And so this is just the, the intro one. <laughs> Big difference, right? Like, so if you guys uh recall, now we probably don't want that big of a difference, of course, but we we might want something, right? So I'm gonna do rhythmic and dirty. Let's see what it comes up with. So that almost sounded like it'd be a good inflection almost on the original theme, right? Potentially, it at least has that potential, right? So what I'm gonna do is turn down the dry wet in this. Well, like just adds a little bit of flavor, a little bit of flair, right? So let's put that there. just a little trick there I mean just you know for more differentiation between your hook and your verse right because it's the same chords it's the same rhythm if you guys recall we just use what's called a different chord inversion on some of the notes and now we took an additional step we put pan on the hook and we put movement just a little bit, right? Remember, we blended it in on the verse. Let's check this out. And that's kind of cool how we do it like that because now it has the original piano flavor with that little bit of movement in there. All right, cool. So we got those taken care of. I might be pretty satisfied with that. Let's hear that. Just for fun, I, I know we're having all sorts of fun, guys. I'm gonna put Shaper Box on this and do the pan as well. But instead of it being one bar, I'm gonna try two bars with a similar pan. Uh, not the super hardcore, but just okay. Let's. So that's kind of cool, right? So we have the piano doing it every measure, and then we have the lead doing it every other measure. So yeah, it just makes it 
more interesting to listen to, right? Because now your your ears are like, well, what's what's going what's going on, right? So you want to do it in moderation, not too much, because if you do too much, you might get people like messed up and stuff, uh, you know, driving. I don't know. I got a producer buddy of mine that <laughs> he likes to make just like some weird stuff, man, and he's like. I don't want people like driving to this. I'm like, I, I don't think I even want to make something that hardcore because I love listening to music while I drive. You know, don't want to prohibit you from doing that. for having no direction and just having fun for two hours not too shabby right it's just a song I don't know what genre it is enjoyable though so this is pretty much the end of the song but what I'm gonna do is have some fun and what I mean by that I'm gonna loop the hook go on a website to uh, see if I can get some vocal hooks, right? Just for fun. See if anything's there, right? Check it out. It's kind of like going up to a girl, you know? If you don't go up, you never know. And if you do go up, you might get a yes, you might get a no. You might get a maybe. Now, the cool thing about Ableton is that, you know, it is possible to, uh, you know, change keys, and, you know, especially with warp, man. Warp's just stupid powerful. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Ooh, excuse me. But I'm just going to do A minor for now on this website. We'll do uh let's try hooks. Got like four hundred of them in A minor, so Venimos a party, Vegas Venimos a party, Vegas and nice, me gusta a party. No
Alright, cool. So the BPMs don't quite match up, guys. Oh. You guys probably can't hear me much when that uh, audio is playing. But anyway, so the BPM doesn't quite match up on this one. But I think it sounds good. I think it sounds pretty good. Okay. So... Uh, Yeah, I'm free falling. Can you hear me? All right, so I'm gonna get the uh, the high and the low dry, so we can add our own stuff there. Okay. Now those vocals chops earlier. Oh, those sound good too, right? So let's grab those. Uh, what else do we got here? Nothing for you. Nothing. You know, I don't know if we're gonna use that one or not, but I have a lot of credits, so I'm just gonna grab those. Okay. I'm free. Damn, that sounds cool. Okay, so I'm free. It's the same kit, so yeah, I'm free. Falling, can you? I'm free. I don't think we need that chorus too. Well, maybe we'll see. Let's see what the verse is. I've not never felt so alive in my life. So let's go to the verse just for fun. So we'll go to our splice folder, check this stuff out real quick. All right. This is vocal future pop. All right. So we got five different sounds here. We got some fun stuff, right? So we'll do our risers. We'll do the tag. And then we'll add five more tracks. So look at that. All right, cool. So we have our chorus. Yeah, I'm free, but. All right, so let's put this one here just for fun. Yeah, I'm free. Okay, so that comes in a little late, of course, whatever, right? So you can see it's already set to 145. So I'm going to go ahead and change this from complex to complex pro and turn down the formats. Yeah, I'm free falling. Can you hear me? Let's maybe put that back. Yeah, I'm free falling. Can you hear me? Calling, calling for you. Yeah, I'm free. That's weird. Yeah, I'm free. Yeah, I'm free falling. Can you hear me calling, calling for you? Yeah, I'm free falling. I'ma keep on falling, falling for you. All right, that was kind of cool. Let's like, take this vocal chop, put it here. Just for, let me just see how it sounds right there. All right, but I'm actually gonna, t uh, instead of uh, just drag that down, I'm gonna move it down like that. The reason I'm doing that is because I wanna put the choruses next to each other, right? So I'm gonna move this down even one more, move that up so that it's not too close to the other yellow one. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I'm free falling, can you hear me calling, calling? For you, yeah, I'm free falling. I'ma keep on falling, falling for you. All right, so 
the sequence got messed up somehow. Um, so you can see right now it says 171.85, whereas this is 145. It means a couple things. So this one's going to be a little weird. Okay, let's check this out. That's not terrible. All right, so let's see how this sounds. Four thing, four thing for you. Let's maybe take it down a little. Back. That does not sound right. But maybe it is. So, uh, maybe I'll try it. All right, cool, right? So we got the verse, we got that little interlude section. So let's see. Well, of course, let's try something real quick. So that's the break. Of course, once that's the, uh, that's the low we put. So now we have to put the high put it right next to it. And then of course we'll take complex, complex pro turn on the formants. Might mess around with that a little bit, but very me as well. Get so let's get the backing here just for fun. Yeah, I'm free falling. Can you hear me calling, calling for you? Yeah, I'm. Ooh. All right. I like that harmony there. That sounds really good. Um, harmonies are fun though, right, guys? Okay. How does that sound on the first one? Yeah. Calling, calling for you. Yeah, I'm free falling. I'm a kid. Yeah, I'm free falling. Can you hear me calling, calling for you? Yeah. We'll definitely adjust those levels. I'm just putzing around on that. Okay, so we'll put this here. Put this here for the interlude. For you. Ooh, that's a happy little mistake, guys. Let's put that over here, All right? And then I'll take out the first time, so it only comes on the second time. Oh yeah, that is about to go down. So uh, obviously, I'll. Uh, I got the first little bit, maybe it's there, maybe there. Oh yeah, that's cool. Um. Alright, like I said, happy little accident there. I'm gonna put that here. I do that there, that there. Okay. Calling for you. Calling for you. Yeah, I would definitely need to adjust the volumes. Okay. Cool. So now we only have left the verse. I've never. Alright, so let's see how that sounds. So again, Ableton's good, but it's not perfect, right? 
So this is 145. It was showing up as 150 almost. Oh, I put 145 in. Okay. you make me life every time. You know, just for fun. Let's put it there. Oh yeah. So I'm just going to duplicate that for now. I might do something different later. But for now, that's what we got. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to put that here on its lonesome. Let's maybe try how that sounds there. Uh, I don't want to cover up the tag, so.
Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm free, but I'm thinking you can't be causing, causing for you. Let me copy that on the second time through too, right? So, so I'm gonna go So I'm going to do that real quick so that uh, when the audio clip comes in, it doesn't do that pop right away. It kind of blends in. You're falling. You're falling. I'm going to keep on falling. falling. I'm going to keep on falling, falling for you. All right. Well, party time's over, I guess, guys. But hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.